The NHL season is almost here, so today we will be predicting the Atlantic Division standings for the upcoming season. All right, the final division, the Metropolitan Division. Number eight for me is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Number seven, the Philadelphia Flyers. And the number six team for me is the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, let me start off with the Blue Jackets very quickly. I think it's uh, the right time to say this. Um, you guys could tell from all our NHL videos that we might be doing this for the whole year, but for sure, for every preview video we've done, um, the tragedy of Johnny Goudreau and his brother Matthew Goudreau, we've been putting a tribute page at, at the beginning just because we feel like that was the best thing to do. Um, so just quick two words because this is obviously his team where he no longer will be a part of, unfortunately, um, physically. But, you know, um, obviously all the stories have come out of how nice of a guy he is and all that, which is true. And I'm, I'm not going to try to relive all that right now. But... On the hockey side of things, it's a big, big loss um, in the hockey world because he was kind of like the um, role model, the figure of small hockey players that have skill that could play. And I'm talking about guys like Cole Caulfield, who changed his number in honor of him. I'm talking about guys like Connor Garland, guys like Niels Hoaglander. And these guys who've, who've come up are now no longer late round picks or now first round picks, right? So... Um, He's changed the game that way. This is the reason why he was Johnny Hockey for a reason. And, uh, yeah, the hockey world is definitely going to miss miss one of the game's greatest um, players and people. So, once again, uh, just condolences to all of Johnny and Matthew's family, um, friends, teammates, and the hockey world in general. So, that's my number eight team. And uh, I'll let you go say your eight, seven, and six. Then I'll explain why the Jackets are still down here. Yeah, eight. I'm going also with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Number seven, I went with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And number six, I went with the Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, yeah, everything you said was well said. But with the Columbus Blue Jackets, they're going to be facing a tragic loss. And in terms of like, at the end of the day, um, how, how un unfortunate of events they were, their locker room, their organization is going to be shaken up and uh, they're just how are they going to react you know especially to start off the season so there's like obviously this. two ways they could react one no one's going to blame them it's going to yeah. be tough right especially the first couple of weeks the second way is they you know um come together as a team and do something right but we also got to be realistic here we're doing these predictions and i think looking at the roster as much as i still like the roster in terms of fun watchability with the young guys they also brought in Don Waddell from the Carolina uh, uh, Hurricanes as their GM. And uh, I, I don't know if he's president or GM or both, but also bringing in Dean Everson to help set that culture. Um, yes, unfortunately, Johnny Goudreau will not be part of that. However, um, and this team would have been at least challenging my seven and six for sure. Um, but in the meantime, like they have the young guys, they need to, um, that hopefully he'll step up in Adam Fantilli, Kent Johnson, Cole Sillinger. Um, I like their defense, like Provorov, Severson, and... Um, Borensky as well. Yes, goaltending is up and down. Um, bring in guys like Sean Monaghan um, to help establish that culture. Obviously, we know why he was signing there for a reason. But yeah, I mean, there's not, not much to say. I don't want to add too much onto it. But yeah, yeah. it's unfortunate. This is the team, though, I'll say this, that deserves the first overall pick more than anybody this year. Yeah, for well, sure. For sure. But then, yeah, but they could also, like you said, they could also be the best story in hockey yeah, this year as well. For right? sure. Come together. But overall, I think with the Jackets, just to wrap it up, and uh, the reason why they struggled last year is because uh, Zach Rowensky wasn't at his best. And we know yeah. that Zach Rowensky is a really good defenseman in this league. So if you could just fig play play to his level, you know, this team could be better already from what they were last year and play to his improvement. Like you said, they already have the young pieces. But number seven, I have the Penguins. And uh, the reason I wrote down here is number one, obviously, they lost Jake Ensel, right? They traded him away to Carolina. And uh, number two, they are an uh, old squad, and they kind of went all cut in. Cut you last. off. Cut you off. During last season, <laughs> he's no longer a hurricane, Jake Ensel. Yeah. Well. But yeah. Oh, we're gonna get to that anyways. Yeah. But again, yeah, they lost Ensel. Number two, um, they're old. They kind of made moves last year where they wanted to go all in, and they weren't nowhere near. And I feel like this year they're gonna face those repercussions in terms of contract and contract issues, and obviously they're inability to get younger guys now because of the assets you use for Eric Carlson trade. And uh, number three, it, it just in terms of the good, they did sign Sidney Crosby as well and extended him. <laughs> so. But yeah, no, like, um, I'll go seven first then. Uh, Philly, I just think last year was an anomaly 
that's that's just me. They were supposed to be the worst team in hockey. They were the best story in hockey last year. Um, usually this happens with Torch teams as well. The culture only lasts so long there because of the type of coach so he is. So one season wonder? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not, again, I'm looking at their team. They have a bunch of underrated players. Nothing stands out to me. I really would have considered, if Johnny Goudreau uh, was still play, uh, here and playing, I would have even considered them last, uh, like last year as well. But with Philly, for me, I, again, I don't want to get too much into it. I just think last year was a little bit too much of an anomaly. Um, yes, the exciting thing is they have Matt Mitchkov. So we'll see how he does, uh, how much he'll contend with Matt Quinn Salabrini for the for the Calder there. But I don't, I, it's just, yeah, I'm going to yeah, stick with sweet. that. I agree with you. At the end of the day, I have my six. At the end of the day, they finished like fourth. Yeah. Right, whatever it was, fourth or yeah. like fifth. I feel like and like they were like, teams, like this, Devils got better. Yeah, and uh, at the end, they were this close to a playoff spot. Yeah. I have them, I have them dropped off too. At the end, it's like, whatever you said, like, the big question is, can they pull off what they did last year? Exactly, that's the main, uh, I'm that's the main thing. Um, but the second thing is, like you said, they added Matvey Mitchkov. And at the end of the day, he is a rookie. Yeah. Right? He's he's probably first time playing North American hockey. They have the Cutter well. Kojia drama happen. Uh, with well, the this stuff, there's very dope with that. So that's that no that, excuse so for that. So obviously they had... There's like, no excuse they, for that. They upgraded... So the thing is this with the... They added Jamie Drysdale with yeah, that. So yeah. yeah. They already felt doubt. That was already like that was old news. Year, yeah, know, no, yeah. That was old news. But the, the news right now is Matvey Mitchkov. And... Uh, Again, if they do find a way to do what they did last year and add Mitchkov, you mm. could see a playoff Prove team. You, wrong. you could see a playoff team here. But at the end of the day, it was just so out of nowhere last year. And it happens with John Tortorella. Tortorella usually, that's why he usually Columbus. gets fired in like the second or third year and yeah. every time he, wherever he coaches. But again, yeah, like you said, prove us wrong. But right now, we're not, we didn't buy into, we're not buying into the hype of what they did last year because it was just such a, Surprise. I mean, you bought a little bit that you put on my head of Pittsburgh still, but... No, that's just more me more hating on Pittsburgh than it is buying in on the Flyers. <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh for me is six. Yeah, you lose Gensel, you lose your scoring touch there, you add Bovillier, great. At the end of the day, you're, you're going to agree with what I just said about Pittsburgh. Exactly. The they're they're day, just like, old. Like, Evgeny Malkin is not the same. Like, for me to believe in Pittsburgh, Malkin has to be way better than last year, and how much can that be the case when he's older, right? And it's not going to be the same. Crosby is going to be insane. Once again, I have no like he is he the needs LeBron, to be. he's he the needs, Brady, he needs to be, and yeah. he needs to be as well. So I feel like that that reason, yes, the coach uh, Mike Sullivan will also um, be on uh, on the hot seat during the year as well. But I still trust him a little bit to at least be competitive. I still think like listen, this NHL, uh, the last two years of the NHL have been very high in parity, like, the, the, so much parity in the league in that like each division that we did it was still tough to rank. Like, I will not be surprised if Pittsburgh somehow pull up a Washington from last year. Like, you counted out Washington last year, and look what they did, right? Yeah. So, at the end of the day, it's just a prediction, I think. But at the end, if we, we have to go with recent history, they're older. They lost, arguably, their, they're probably their second best player um, after Crosby, and that, that doesn't do well. That was Crosby's line mate as well. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I guess we've said the same things, they're just in different yeah. order. So, well, let's move on to a number five and number four. At number five, I have the New York Islanders. And number four, I have the Washington Capitals. Same. Exact same. Okay, so let's get right into it. Uh, the New York Islanders, the first thing I'm right to, uh, just like the most basic average team you could possibly think you of. You know what you said about the Seattle Seahawks? Kraken or Seahawks? Seahawks. Yeah. Mid. Yeah. They're Literally this. They're a the better blues for me. Basically, yeah, because they make the playoffs and obviously they get uh, usually first rounded. Yeah. And uh, the, the big thing here I'm looking at in terms of hockey-wise is we need to see Sorokin improve from last year because he was not good last year to the point that he did not play. He did not play. I think he played one playoff game, right? Yeah. Like Var- Varlama was the starter. And uh, again, they do have Patrick Roy. Who, Wah. He, Wah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not the greatest head coach, but like he still kind of did something last year in terms of like, you know, he kept things steady. It was up and down. Yeah, it was very sure. up and down in his tenure. But overall, the big thing for the Islanders fans is what they need to hope for is that Sorokin improves for much more than last year. And overall, like, if they just keep other key, other pieces of this roster stay steady in terms of, like, Horvat, Barzell, and stay healthy, you know, they sh- again, they should be fighting for a playoff spot, a wild card spot, because that's what they usually are, mid. And yeah. yeah. But... Yeah, at the end of the day, um, you said everything perfectly, so I'll just move on with number four here. It's the Washington Capitals for me. I was debating number three. I really was. Um, I feel yeah. like they improved a lot considering what they did last year. Like, they did the opposite of Pittsburgh and continued that further. There's two storylines. One, can they repeat what they did last year but even be better? Two, we already know 41 goals away of beating the record. So I'll ask you that first. Is it happening next season? Alexander Ovechkin. I'll just say this much. If, if he finds a way to pull it off, 
this next year, this season. There will be a playoff team. There will be a playoff team, guaranteed. Because last year, obviously, when Ovechkin got going, is when that's when the, they made the run. Yeah. Right? So if Ovechkin pulls it off this year and drops 41, 42 goals, right? Or 40 goal at least, 35 plus, let's just say, because more consistent throughout the year. Um, they sh- there will be a guaranteed playoff team, in my opinion, that if he does that. Because at the end of the day, your best player is going to be your best player. That being said, I still think them and the Islanders, when you look at their roster, are like the blue, a better, slightly better version of the Blues Wild for me in terms of they are vet filled. They're like, you know, giving Tom Wilson a massive contract. Um, you go up, but I like the moves they made though, because people thought last year was done. You, your goalie tandem is good, right? Charlie Lindgren was good last year, and you replaced Darcy Kemper with uh, a guy who a legit starter in this league yeah and right. uh it's healthy when healthy when healthy as long as he's healthy right yeah. uh offensively you add andre manjapani who's a pretty underrated goal scorer uh with the calgary flames the last couple of years you add pld and honestly this might be a good situation for pld because there's no real structure there because defensively i don't like their defense really um right when i'm looking they added jacob chikorin but, like, I'm talking about, like, a... F- the f- it is offense-heavy. It's offense-heavy, for it, sure. It is offense-heavy um, in the squad. So, that way, that's where PLD kind of could be, like, okay, um, this is me. I could show why. And he usually has, like, how you said it. Yeah, I was The waves, it right? Yeah, the so, waves. It, dude, this should be a good wave for him if you're looking at the patterns and VR passwords. Exactly. PLD's I mean, he's not centering uh, Ovechkin as Dylan Strong, but who knows? They could still be be together yeah, that Yeah, I agree with well. everything. Like, they have a good goalie tandem. They added great depth pieces. So, because of that, let's move into our top three, which we have three teams in there, but let's see your order. At number three, I went with the Carolina Hurricanes. At number two, the New Jersey Devils. And at number one, the New York Rangers. So this is definitely our most consistently the same. I think the Pacific, we flip-flop two things. This one only flip-flop one. I have the same, right? Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, the reason why I did not drop them before as much as I really wanted to. Um, they were still a good team before getting Genzo. At the end of the day, right? Genzo helped them put them over at the top in terms of goal scoring and stuff. So that's why they, they're not going... Two and one because of them losing Genso during the year, um, to the point where Martin Natchez was forced to come back. Otherwise, you had no real offensive firepower there as well. Um, Natchez, who ne- who himself doesn't play well in the system, but again, how are you gonna do it? Pressure's on for Sebastian Ajo of Andres Svechnikov and Seth Jarvis for me because if you go look down the depth there, it's similar to Colorado in terms of offensive firepower. However, um, defensively they're really good, right? Yes, they lost key pieces, uh, Pesci and Shea. Um, but you replace them with Shane Gossespierre and Sean Walker is not a good. It's not a bad consolation. It's not terrible. I think Gossespierre was Gossespierre. Blah. Shane Gossespierre Gossespierre Bear was there before. Oh, I can't say name. Okay, but never like, mind. Okay, yeah. I messed up that one. But yeah, no, like I, th- I think they maybe have traded for him. Like you know, came team. back. Like, yeah. Everything. Like he, he oh, was there. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. They brought back Jalen Chatfield, who had an underrated year for them as well. It was pretty good. Yeah. So so yeah. Uh, what the thing again? The reason why I don't have the Canes up there when like they usually are in two and one position, always fighting for the division, is because they lost Brady Shea, Jake Gensel, Tivo Teravainen, and Brett Pesci in four main losses. Even yeah. though they had some suitable replacements in terms of like. I think they did add another forward in. I forgot his name. Of Tyson Jones. It was. <laughs> like, there Brandon was Lemieux, one. Tyson Jones, Jordan Martinuk was... Uh, Martinuk was extended. Yeah, so... There was someone else. I Ross Lovitches and William Carter, yeah. Yeah, Ross Lovitches is like the fourth line mean hitter guy that we saw. In He's going second line record. Jesper Fast. Yeah, so... Yeah. Oh, I think... Was it Fast? No, I don't know. But, yeah, it was Fast. Was it? No. I honestly... I don't, don't, yeah, I don't remember. I actually genuinely lost track. But, yeah, again... Um, the main reason why I do have them in top three is because they already have their culture and identity set. And yeah, Brendamore's back. And Brendamore's, st- yeah, again, Brendamore is back. And overall, they still have their main, main pieces, right? And uh, as they, Freddie Anderson is the answer in that for, night, for now for them. And as long as he's healthy, and we saw when he did get hurt last year, or was I think it was blood clots when he was at the missed time or yeah. something, it was a medical issue. Um, their goaltending did fall apart. But when he comes back and in the playoffs, it was more more so Freddie Anderson being the answer again. So like I said, a lot of the pieces are still there. It's just going to, the reason the reason why they're dropping off is they're going to need to make some adjustments. They need to make a trade like a Gensel type. Or oh, yeah, not, again. Maybe not at the level of Gensel, but try to find a goal scorer that could be available. Uh, number two for me is the New Jersey Devils. A couple of reasons. One, you got to bank it that they're healthy, right? For the Carolina very quickly. It's like you said last on the Atlantic one. We're going to judge them on the playoffs anyways, right? So oh, the yeah. Regular sure, season-wise yeah. are good. Devils. Last year, we thought they were going to be that huge jump team. Um, and we, they were injured and they did not play good. Ba- lack of goaltending, which led them to firing Lindy Ruff. 
Um, bringing in uh, Jay Woodcroft. Uh, Lawrence sorry, Keith. sorry, Sheldon Keefe. I always Just do have Keith, Sheldon yeah. Keefe. Um, here's the thing: you last year you lose Severson and Graves. You up, you got screwed over there. This year you add uh, Pesci. Um, who is out right now in the IR, but at least you added him in there. You added Brandon Dillon to help figure that out, which means Simone Nemich and Luke Hughes need to f- step their game up a little bit more, uh, especially a guy like Nemich. Um, for me, uh, the other thing for me is you got Jacob Markstrom. Yeah, so you upgraded goaltending massively. Yeah. Right? So that's, what, again, it was, it was preventing goals, preventing chances, and uh, obviously Markstrom is a big piece of that. Another big piece of that was where, where the really seasoned fell apart from them, in my opinion, last year, it was not really the Jack Hughes injuries. It was Dougie Hamilton season-ending injury. Yeah. With torn pack. And uh, my legit note wrote, the note I wrote down here is like what every devil fan should be seeing, saying, praying, please stay healthy, Dougie. <laughs> yeah. It's as simple as that because he is their number one defenseman and he is uh, a solid right shot, right-handed defenseman as well. So overall, he just needs to keep doing what he has been doing in his career and hopefully the injury doesn't affect him too much. And, listen, and then, as long as he's on the ice, that takes pressure away from Hughes and Nemich, those young defensemen. Yeah, so for me, also their top line is like one of the best in hockey if they're healthy. Oh, yeah, like, offensively, like you Jack just, Hughes and Jasper Bratt, like they're up there and one of the more underrated ones that you probably don't talk about right away. Like Yeah, and then obviously you, you want Heischer healthy and all these guys healthier. With that being well. said, though, number one, I'm sticking with the Rangers. I was debating between back and forth. The reason why I kept it is because this has, team has a little bit more continuity. Um, Peter Laviolette proved me wrong. Uh, they added Riley Smith as well. Yeah, they added <laughs> Riley Smith. But they pro- Peter Laviolette pro- proved me wrong last year. The reason why, number one, um, and my arguably teaser could be my cup finalist at least, um, is... Alexi Lafreniere finally showed that he's a number one overall pick type thing, and he could still, in my opinion, or still needs like still he still needs to elevate a little bit more. Yeah. But he's at least he's shown not, that he he's not the number one. He hasn't shown that he's number one pick level, but he's shown that he's still worth keeping and still a yeah, vital piece. Yeah, but I feel team. like he's like at least shown that he's not Kapokako at the moment. And exactly, that's the other guy. We that's the big see. thing. Uh, I love their center depth and Trocheck is a Benajad, Philip Hedl, Sam Carrick there. Um, or Timmy Pinner, unfortunately, did get hurt on, on the preseason, which has been the theme throughout this preseason. So we'll see what his health status looks like at the moment. Currently, their injury injuries are to Ryan Lindgren and Jimmy VC. Jimmy VC was a good piece, is a good piece for them as well. Um, the other thing, they have the best goalie tandem in the league, probably. Igor and Quick. Yeah. yeah so here's the thing, we're like right now, again, similar squad continuity. Agree with all those points, but I have a feeling we might see another level to Igor Shesterkin. And the reason why... Contract? He is on a contract year, and this guy is probably going to looking to break the goalie market. And as he should. As he should. And, like, ask... Try to see... Prove that he's worth, like, $13 million a year, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> because that's what he... $12 million at least, I guess. Um, but overall... Like, I, I agree with everything you said. They the, didn't they go the big continuity. in hunting, like, two yeah, years ago. They, 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 they have the pieces. Yeah. They don't need to go um, big in hunting. However, think. they have one... Di- um, question mark at the moment is their captain in terms of they were trying to trade him or they're trying to get rid of him so that can be the little dysfunction is but at the moment like I did with the whole Swayman thing which obviously just to make it clear the Swayman thing is assuming he's playing Truba will be playing he'll still be, he'll still be that pest that hard hitting dude for now uh, we'll see what that breaks out during the year uh, but, as well yeah, let's recap quickly at number eight, I have the Columbus Blue Jackets. Number seven, Pittsburgh Penguins. Number six, Philadelphia Flyers. Five, the Islanders. Four, Capitals. Three, Hurricanes. Two, Devils. And number one, the reigning defending Metropolitan Division champions, the New York Rangers. Uh, eight, Columbus Blue Jackets. Seven, Philadelphia Flyers. Six, Pittsburgh Penguins. Four, uh, five, uh, New York Islanders. Four, Washington Capitals. Three, Carolina Hurricanes. Two, the New Jersey Devils. One, New York Rangers. Uh, one thing I want to say very quickly, though. You say Pittsburgh is six. I'm not saying seven is not. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a. It's a little bit bolder on my head still. It's just weird to. It think. is. It's just I honestly, I did. I, I, in my head, I said this is me. This is bold, but I'm just gonna stick to it. Yeah. I mean, who just, knows, right? It's predictions. It's predictions. I usually just go. With, like I usually go with my first gut, right? Like, yeah. Then I don't really change it after. <laughs> exactly. But that's our Metropolitan Division. So make sure you guys click two division videos that are popping up on the screen right now and check out all four now division videos are out. Um, hit that post notification bell because we'll be dropping an NHL tier list as well as our overall playoff predictions, award predictions, uh, the next NHL episode as well. Hit that subscribe button, follow our socials link down below, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.